Okay, welcome back. Last two days we were talking about logs, logarithms, right? So you should have done 6.4 and turned that in. If you weren't here, you know where to get it, right? Okay, uh, if you were absent Friday, make sure you turn in last week's warm up. So put it absent the day you were absent, turn in those warm ups so you don't get a zero when you could have a hundred, right? Get the easy grades, right? Is everyone looking up here? Hey, look over here. By the way, put that in your, you got something in your ear. All right, so let's talk about this. By the way, test Friday over cubic and exponential. So if you remember, cubic looks like kind of like a weird looking S, and then cube root is the inverse function. Then we talked about exponential functions, and then now we're talking about logs, which are the inverse of exponential, okay? So, test Friday, we'll have a review on Thursday. Again, the best way to get a good grade in my class is to get a good test grade. The best way to get a good test grade is to review, okay? Uh, that test will be the last new grade of the nine weeks. We still have a week after that. But uh, at least that'll be the last one of the nine weeks, third nine weeks. And then again, we have a week, then spring break. Then we're in the final stretch, the fourth nine weeks, the fourth quarter. Okay. Some of us are going to be making a comeback, hopefully, because some of us need it. But nonetheless, let's talk about this log. If you hadn't been here, you got to know how to type this in your calculator. So let's make sure we know how to type in a log into our calculator. Okay. Uh, you go to a new document, don't save, number one, new calculator. What button do I press for a log? So remember, where's the log? There's a tiny little log right here. Next to the number one, you don't see 10 to the X, right? You press control, 10 to the X. That's going to give you the log feature, okay? Then you got two numbers. You got the base, the little one, and you got the regular number that's being operated on. So I press Control 10 to the X. I'm going to press 11 for my base, 1,331 in the parentheses. And what do I get? Three, right? So log base 11 of 1,331 is three. Does anybody not know how to type that in the calculator? Okay. Now we are gonna use that log information to do today's notes. Today we're talking about the inverse of exponential functions. So let me pass this out. That's not what I want to All right, here we go. Exponential base 10. So if you remember from early last week, exponential has an X in the exponent. You see it up here. 10 to the power of X. If you were to graph this in your calculator, 10 power X, you would get this table. Okay. Now I, I can't pull it up at the same time right now, but let me make sure y'all know. Y'all know how to get a table. You graph, control, what? Control T, okay? So if you press graph, control T, you're gonna get this table, okay? It gets really small in the negatives, but then as it goes up, it's multiplying by 10 each time, okay? Now, the inverse is the logarithmic base 10, okay? 10 power x, log base 10 of x, these are opposites. So when we have an inverse, what do we do to a table to get the inverse? I mean, like, if I'm just going to write it over here, what am I doing with the numbers? 
Flip it, right? Everyone look at this from every single quiz. The last three quizzes do the same dang thing, right? Flip the table. So fill that in. Right? I'll give you a second. Make sure you got that down, right? Okay, now just like before, these two graphs are going to look like they um, are reflecting across the diagonal line. So when we graph it, let's go ahead and graph it down here, okay? On your graphs, the one on the left, if you plot those points, only three of them are on the graph. So these three, negative 2, 0 0.1, 0, 1, 1, 10. Okay, graph those three points, and you're going to get this graph, and you're going to get another one of these lines that you can't touch. If you can't touch this line, remember MC Hammer? Can't touch it. What's it called? This weird A word. Asymptote. Okay? So again, plot those three points, the only ones you can graph. And when you go to the left, it gets closer and closer, but it does not touch. Let me uncover that real quick. And as it goes to the left, no touch. So this horizontal asymptote that it does not touch has an equation. So it's a horizontal line, and it goes through this vertical axis. What's this vertical axis up and down called? X or Y? Y. So you have to put Y equals, and since it goes through 0, that horizontal asymptote is y equals 0, okay? Go ahead and plot the other points. So, for my logarithmic function, the only ones I can graph are 0 0.1, negative 1, 1, comma, 0, 10, comma, 1. Those points, you can see, instead of having a horizontal asymptote, vertically, it's never going to touch this vertical line going up and down. This is my asymptote. Down. So the vertical equation, the horizontal one was y equals 0. So vertically, it goes through the x-axis, so it's going to be x equals 0 for my vertical asymptote. Okay, we'll get to that next. First, let's talk about the domain array. Domain. Look at this blue graph on the left. Do you see how it goes forever to the left without touching the line? And it actually does go forever to the right. It's pretty steep, but it's going to the right forever. So if it goes forever to the left, it goes forever to the right, that's a negative to positive infinity. You can write it just like this. Or what was that little, what do we write for forever at both ways? The weird R, right? So you can put, or, when I, on the notes, I'm, I'm telling you both, but you just have to pick one. You don't have to put both every time. Okay? So if it goes forever left, forever right, all real numbers. Now, notice, this does not go down forever. Right? Because isn't it? It can't cross this line, so it's not going down forever. What's the least it can be right here? The line it is zero, right? So zero is as far as it goes down, but it doesn't touch zero. So one way to write it is that the y values can be anywhere above zero. So y is greater than zero. That's one way to write this. Okay. Or the way I like to write it is. We go from 0 to infinity, but you have to use parentheses because it does not touch 0. So don't put a bracket, parentheses, 0 to infinity. Then it goes here, up. So remember, range is vertical. Okay. 
The vertical asymptote, we already said it, but over here on the right side, if it doesn't touch this vertical line at zero, it is x equals zero. Do you see horizontal is always y equals, vertical is always x equals? These are on your notes, so that way you can use that when you're doing your examples on your assignment, right? Did you get the range? So, now what's the domain of this purple one on the right? Domain. How far to the left does it go? It doesn't go past here, which is where? Well, sorry. Sorry. How far to the left? So, right here, zero, right? So it doesn't go further than zero, but it goes forever to the right. Okay. So kind of like the range of the original one, this is going to say x can be anything greater than zero, anything to the right of that asymptote. Uh, again, I, I would write it like this, though, zero to infinity, because it does not touch zero. So I got to put parentheses. And then my range, you can see it's going down forever. You can see that it's slightly increasing, but it is going up forever. So once again, that would be negative to positive infinity or all real numbers. Again, you only have to pick one of them. You don't have to write both every time. Now, that's a lot all at once, but make sure you actually have these all filled out, okay? Right, 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 right. And then we're going to flip it over to the back and do some examples. Your assignment is going to be like the examples in the back, stuff you've been doing, right? This should look very like, I've seen this a million times, right? We've done linear. We've done quadratic. We've done cubic. Now we're doing exponential, okay? So lots of different types of ways to do this. If everyone got the front side at the bottom filled out, we're on the back now. Here we go. Okay. So the last two days when we did logarithms, we're going to use that to solve this. Okay. But first, could you take this equation, type it in your calculator, and get a little table? Everyone should be able to graph and table. Yeah. So when you do that, okay, you're going to end up getting these numbers. We're going to just pick three numbers when we graph these, okay? Uh, they get lots of decimals, and it's hard to graph sometimes, okay? So go ahead and type, sorry, write this down, and we're going to plot those points off to the right. Okay? Negative 1, negative 1.9, 0, negative 1, and 1, 8. Okay. So you got that table, you got that graph, yeah? I want you to notice, negative one gives you negative 1.9. Do you see how that's not exactly two? That's kind of a clue that that's gonna be your asymptote. It's not touching negative two. In fact, it never will. Getting closer and closer and closer. You see where my line is right here. So this is where I need to put that asymptote. Wherever it looks like it's getting really close but not touching. Okay. Negative two, yes. So go ahead and draw that dashed line at negative two. When you draw your graph, make sure it's not crossing that line. That's your horizontal asymptote. Now, for your horizontal asymptote, you got to write it as y equals for that horizontal line. Always y equals for a horizontal line. Cool. And please don't forget to write the, draw the dashed line at negative 2. Okay, now I know you could do a couple things. Can't you flip this table over, plot those new points, give me a new vertical asymptote? Okay. But on the notes, before we get to that, this is the hard part. If you have not been paying attention for some reason, look right here. This part, I want you to focus, zero in, like a laser. 
like Cyclops from the X-Men, when he takes off his glasses and a laser comes out of his eyes. Okay, focus right here. Cool. Here we go. These are the same four steps we've done the last three sections, okay? F of X turns into what letter? Y. So Y equals 10X minus 2. Write that down. Second step, what do I do with X and Y? Switch them. All right. When I flip them, it's going to look like this. X equals 10 to the Y minus 2. Now here's the, here's the kicker. This is where everyone needs to really check, check this out. You need to solve this for Y. If I want to get Y by itself, let's remember, I always get rid of what first? The loner. What's the opposite of minus 2? Plus 2 on both sides. So here's how I would write it. Plus 2 here. Plus 2 here. It goes after the x. Okay. Cancels that out. Okay. This is the moment I've been waiting for. Okay. The last two days we talked about logarithms, right? Everybody with me? Do you see how y is up top in the exponent? The only way to bring it down is by doing a logarithm, okay? So if you might remember how to turn this into a log, but I'm going to show you, ready? First things first, write the, write the word log, okay? You write the word log and your base the base of the exponent is 10, so that's going to be the base of your log, okay? The left side of the equation is going to be after the log. And then it's going to equal the exponent. That conversion is what we were doing on yes, yesterday. I say Friday's assignment to Thursday's notes, okay? So again, here's the magic. The base 10 becomes the base of the log. The left side of the equation goes next to it, equals the exponent comes down. This is logarithms. This is why we did the last little section, okay? Now let me ask you, is y by itself? So we're ready to turn it back into inverse function form. Write it like this, please. F inverse X equals this thing. Log base 10, X plus 2. Okay. I know this might look more complicated, uh, but the steps have all been the same. The one kind of weird step is this thing right here. So as long as you understand what goes where, you're good. Okay. So again, base goes next to the log, this comes down, and I want you to use your notes. I want you to look exactly at it, and when you do an example, like, just use what you got, okay? Now, can't you take this table and flip it over? Let's do that real quick. Can't you plot those three points? Okay, so flip that table, plot those new points, and then what you'll see is that since it's negative 1.9 on the x side, now your asymptote is like this, it's up and down. You put your dashed line going up and down at negative, what it's not going to touch, negative 2, okay? I want you to notice something. The horizontal and the vertical asymptote, you see how they're the same number? Okay? They're just X and Y. That's the only difference. Cool? 
So make sure you've got everything, including the VAE, the vertical asymptote. And now we're going to try number two. Now I know this stuff can be kind of dense, kind of like, what the heck's going on here? But you got to practice on this that I don't want you to you know, mess up on. You know? I don't want you to peel out and crash over all this, you know? So, example two, here we go. Okay, first step. Can you graph this in your calculator and press Control T and get a table? Yes, sir. All right, so this is what you would get. These are the numbers that are actually going to fit on your table. Okay, remember, you only want to graph what you can only graph what's going to fit. Okay. Okay. Go ahead and plot those points. Three, four, five. So again, graph it, control T, only points that'll fit, plot those three points, draw yourself your exponential function. Okay? It doesn't touch zero, right? Isn't that right next to zero? 0 0.1, not touching zero. So that's why it's going to be y equals zero for your horizontal asymptote. Okay, and then next thing. We're going to come over here to the equation, but I want to make sure everyone's caught up. Does everyone have so far this? So I'll give you a minute. Graph it. Make sure it looks like that. Because we're going to do the equation together. I want you to be not like this, but like. So, here's next. Here's what we're doing. This f of x turns into what letter? Turns into y. So, y equals 10 to the power of x minus 4. Then, I'm going to switch x and y, right? So, everyone's writing this down. So, right? Switch x and y. It's going to look like this. All right, next, we need to do something, okay? First of all, is there a loader to get rid of after the exponent down here? Nothing's here. So we're going to immediately go straight to the log, okay? We need to do a logarithm, okay? So here's how the logarithm works. Is everyone looking up here? You write the log. The base goes down here, the left side of the equals goes after that, then you have an equal sign, and then the exponent goes over here. Okay? This is the most crucial step, probably the most confusing, so I want to make sure everyone understands it. Okay? Log first, the base goes next. The left side goes after that, put an equal sign, then the exponent comes down, okay? Once you've done that, then, third time, then you need to still solve for y. Do you see how there's a minus 4 here? Minus 4, got to go. How do you get rid of a minus 4? The opposite of minus 4 will be plus 4 on both sides. Uh, so that will be after the whole log. Now that y is by itself, you can rewrite it as an inverse function. f inverse of x equals log base 10x plus 4. Okay. 
Uh, the last half of this is you're going to take that table, flip it over, plot those points, and then you can write the vertical asymptote. You can see it vertically does not touch the y-axis, which is the equation x equals 0. Okay. Go ahead and make sure you have all of that. You got all the equations, all the tables, all the graphs, okay? I'll give you a minute. Make sure you got that down. Okay, last one. Now the last one is similar to the other ones. I will tell you, you get your table. Go ahead and write this down. Plot these points real quick. Everyone, let's do example three real quick, all right? Go me, go me. All right, so example three, right? Looks like this. When you graph it, again, if it says 2.9, you know it doesn't touch 3, okay? Close, but not touching, okay? Positive 3. Then we can graph, sorry, then we can find the equation, f of x turns into y, switch x and y, get rid of the loner, Give me a second to catch up if you're still graphing. Sorry about that. Example three, that is. So look, look where I'm at on the equation, okay? I turned it into y, I switch x to y, I got rid of the loner. Now, at this point, does everyone see this negative sign? Do y'all know how to get rid of a negative? Divide by negative 1. A negative divided by a negative will cancel it out, okay? So go ahead and divide both sides by negative 1. Divide by negative 1, divide by negative 1. All that does is change your signs. It's positive x becomes negative. It's negative 3 becomes positive. And that minus becomes a positive. Okay. Now, once you have 10 to the y, turn it into a log, a logarithm. Okay. So remember, you write the log. The base goes down there, the left side of the equation goes next, equals the exponent. You can write it as an inverse function. You can flip your table, plot your points, and write your vertical asymptote. Okay? I'll let you get all that down. I'm going to pass out the assignment, but you have today, tomorrow, and even into Wednesday. I know this is going to be kind of a little complicated, so we're going to spend some time on it. By the way, when tomorrow is early release, right? So 2 o'clock, right? Make sure you got to ride home. So make sure you get this all down. I'll pass out the assignment. Here we go.